left, even though we did for a minute. But we're back, baby. So, ready to apologize. I left you people hanging for so long. Um, you know, if I did have an excuse, it would probably sound something like I've been working and work has been very busy between the office and Coastal Tactical, but I know that's probably not a good excuse because uh, if you love something, man, you're going to make time for it, so I sincerely apologize. Now, without further ado, I want to go ahead before we jump into things and give all praise, glory, honor to Christ Jesus, my Savior. I hope after filming this video or the viewing of this video, I hope many, many more of you have taken that leap and you have established that loving relationship with our Creator, thusly securing your spot in eternity because I want to see you then. <clears throat> All right. Um been gone for quite some time. Uh and we're back so I don't want to take up too much of your time today. So in part one of today's video we're gonna go ahead and jump into uh some passages from uh, first Corinthians and uh second Corinthians as well. So all right, so this was kind of put on my heart. Like, I actually planned this out a long time ago, um, but it's still pretty relevant, especially with everything that's going on today. And then some of this was kind of prompted because I've been getting a lot of um, questions and rebuttals as of late uh, via social media. <clears throat> when I post certain stuff, people are kind of questioning, like, Know, how do you arrive at that theology or how do you arrive at that perspective on a certain uh, theological text <clears throat> so this is kind of you know I feel like this kind of hit um, home for me personally one day when I was doing a you know a private uh, Bible study that I try to do uh, every day so let's just read all right, so it reads, For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, the intelligence of the intelligent. I will frustrate. Jews demand signs and Greeks look for wisdom, but we preach Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles, but to those whom God has called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ power of God and wisdom of God for the foolishness of God is wiser than human wisdom and the weakness of God is stronger than human strength. So back to uh, the questions and rebuttals that I said I've been getting lately. <clears throat> um, so we have a, an intelligent uh, perspective that we view uh, certain topics we view it from our human intelligence uh, mind, but then there needs to be a time where the uh, spiritual intelligence and the spiritual maturity takes over the uh, human intelligence. <clears throat> um, because I, I had posted something earlier where I said that, you know, I'm not a Christian merely just because I have faith or I don't believe that, you know, Jesus Christ was resurrected merely because, you know, I my faith, um, that would be lazy and intellectually dishonest to just say that. That's, that's like a cop-out. Um, actually, after doing research, it just seems more probable that that did occur uh, rather than not. <clears throat> and I would definitely not be a Christian if it were found that that was, you know, false because we don't want to believe in fake news. So, there is a level of human intelligence that has to go into it, but then there's a level of uh, trust that has to go into it uh, as far as the, the spiritual aspect. So uh, that's where we have to really trust God and understand that he's infinitely uh, smarter than we are, infinitely stronger than we are. And a lot of people can't understand why a person like me would 
say something like that or just talk about believing in a God, period. But it doesn't make sense to somebody who uh, can't grasp um, something outside a materialistic, tangible world. So speaking about things like scripture, um, if it doesn't make sense to them, that is, that's kind of like where it said for, you know, to those who are perishing, you know, it's, it's foolishness. So, yeah, we're all presented with the same opportunity to accept the free gift of God's grace and salvation. Uh, once, once those of us that do um, accept that gift, there's a, there's a transformation um, and that is a part of the transformative nature, one of the attributes of God. And there are certain things that you will come to understand that outside of that transformative nature is not going to make sense to you. Um, and then just to further that, you have people who are just like science, 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 and, you know, uh, spiritual stuff that's fairy tale, Harry Potter nonsense. So, <clears throat> It's certain things that those, the, the, the scientific mind, they can't understand. And there's certain things that occur in this life that they have no explanation for. Um, what, what Frank Turek says very well, uh, science doesn't say anything. Scientists interpret the science and they say what the, the science says. Furthermore, why is it so hard to believe that science just reiterates what uh, spirituality is because if if Christianity is true excuse me my, my mouth is dry if Christianity is true if God is real then that would make God the original scientist right so uh, science does not refute the existence of God it actually strengthens it so <clears throat> again when you try to think too much with your limited human understanding uh, things of the spirit are not going to make sense that's why God said he will uh, frustrate the intelligence of the intelligent and you know this is not to be taken literally where it says that God's foolishness is wiser than you know human wisdom because God is almighty he's all knowing uh, he lacks nothing so it's kind of like one of those things where you know uh your best day is my worst day type thing. I'm not saying that I believe that, but people who talk like that. Um, it's kind of like one of those things. So God can't have a bad day, but uh, theoretically, if it were possible, even on God's bad day, he would still be infinitely smarter than all of the most intelligent minds combined on the planet. Likewise, if there were such thing as God being able to be weak, he would still be infinitely stronger than all the strongest men and women combined on the planet. So I love that. Uh, I love the, the use of language uh, in this passage. You see there's a lot going on with the political climate. Um, and then, you know, just a, a great falling away from uh, the body of Christ. You know, a lot of people who were probably never sincere in the first place. You know, they're kind of rejecting uh, what they were brought up uh, to believe. And a lot of that happens when we don't do our own research. And we get older, we get, you know, enraptured by uh, social media, uh, celebrityism, and just all this nonsense is going on. And it, it kind of, you know, that whole doubt your doubts type thing. But a lot of people, they doubt, and then they kind of just leave it at that, and they, they kind of just run with whatever feels, um, I guess, more true for them at the time. So um, I definitely, definitely want to pray for anybody that is going through something like that, and they're having a hard time kind of understanding uh, or making sense of what's going on. And then you might see people like myself, I'm not... Uh, I'm not. I'm really not at odds with this because God already explained this to me uh, in His Word that this.
stuff would be going on. So I'm actually in a great mood. So uh, moving on, um, <clears throat> taking a look at Second uh, Corinthians chapter two, uh, fourteen through seventeen. But thanks be to God who always leads us as captives, captives in Christ's triumphal procession, and uses us to spread the aroma of the knowledge of Him everywhere. For we are <clears throat> to God the pleasing aroma of Christ among those who are being saved those who are perishing to the one we are an aroma that brings death to the other an aroma that brings life and who is equal to such a task unlike so many who do not peddle the word of God for profit on the contrary in Christ we speak <clears throat> before God with sincerity and those sent from God so um, again I love the language that's being used here you hear uh, hear the, the gospel, hear the message of the, the triumphal uh, message of God, um, and being compared to an aroma. So, uh, a good friend of mine in college, Cassie P, shout out. Um, we had actually took an intro to religion, or an intro to theology. I forgot what the class was called, but. Um, along the way, she ended up getting a book. Can't remember the book, but uh, I'm pretty sure it was written by uh, a pastor or something like that. And it, it, it had a section in the, in the novel where it described our supplications, our prayers, uh, going up to God, and it being like a pleasing aroma in his nostrils. Um, and that's in scripture as well. So you look at you look at believers versus non-believers uh, so to a believer or to somebody that's, that's opening themselves up to receive God's word you know uh, the, the gospel and the message of Christ the new covenant they brought that is going to be pleasing to uh, those individuals because they may have felt like man I've done so much you know garbage things in my life I'm not worthy and that may be true but the uh, the new covenant that Christ brought says that I made a way for that to not matter anymore so that's going to make some people feel good that even even though they did the most terrible things in their lives they, they can still be saved um, to the non-believer who doesn't want anything to do with that that's an aroma of death and a lot of times they don't even understand uh, what that aroma is or what it smells like. A lot of times they don't even realize the aroma of death is already there. So it's happening, you know, without without their knowledge per se, just because uh, people who don't want anything to do with that, um, they're, they're never going to receive it. Uh, they, they don't want it to be true. And, you know, the result of dying living that way is, is death um, as unfortunate as it is I mean that's, that's just the case so um, then coming from 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 3 uh, we're going to look at verses 18 through 20 and it reads, do not deceive yourselves. If any of you think you're wise by the standards of this age, you should become fools so that you may become wise. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness in God's sight. As it is written, he catches the wise in their craftiness. And again, the Lord knows the thoughts of the wise are futile. So I know we skipped around a bit. So we went from 2 Corinthians back to 1 Corinthians, but I wanted to do it that way just to kind of tie it together how, you know, you see uh, the first bit of, of scripture we were looking at, um, it was talking about the, we're talking about uh, how the message is, you know, it's, it's like a, uh, or it's, it's like foolishness to those who are perishing. It's, it's like a, a 
saving grace to those who are being saved. So it all kind of comes back <clears throat> full circle because there are many of us, and you know, I'm including myself in that, um, you get to these points where you're, you're deceiving yourself, you're, you're fooling yourself. Um, you know, a lot of times we think that we can outsmart God, which is, you know, highly laughable, <clears throat> but it's true. Uh, if you ever want something so bad, uh, you know, maybe you are a believer and you want something so bad and God is, maybe he's not telling you no, he's telling you not right now. Or maybe he is telling you no because in his infinite wisdom, he can see something ahead that we can't see. Um, I think about getting a speeding ticket and I'm, you know, I'm so mad and maybe I'm cursing uh, the, the whole day, you know, out just because this one thing happened, but not knowing uh, there was a, a car accident like a mile up the road, excuse me, and if God had not sent that cop to, to pull me over, I would have gotten that accident and died. Um, now, that's just one example, but there are many of us who think that, uh, you know, you look at these uh, atheist debaters who have for centuries debated the Christian faith, and, you know, they think that well, I'm a smart person, so there's no way that this make-believe guy, you know, can offer me anything uh, outside of what I've already accomplished myself. And so we think that we're crafty. And you think about those people who have actually had a revelation, and you know, they've kind of changed their tune up. There. So it's kind of like, <clears throat> no matter how smart you think you are. That wisdom and that, that intelligence and those smarts that you attain, if you're not using it to honor God, then the, the end of that story is going to be a sap, a fortune. Um, so it's better to be a fool for God than uh, a Bill Nye brainiac for the world. I'm not even sure if Bill Nye is that smart as the smartest he uh, portrayed me on TV. I don't know. Maybe he is. Um, <laughs> so I want to encourage you guys to, uh, first of all, if you are having trouble grasping uh, spiritual concepts or if you're struggling with, you know, wanting to believe, then do your research. I mean, I, I know I've been saying this from the jump uh, from my first videos, but um, it kind of doesn't make a whole lot of sense to talk about something or, you know, at least try to debate it or debunk it, you know, for your own self-gain if you haven't even researched it for yourself. Um, I've looked into to, uh, Islam and I've looked into not saying like because I was struggling with uh, Christianity I researched them to see because I, I wanted to, to I didn't want to be pompous about uh, apologetics so I didn't want to be pompous about talking to people about the word of God and maybe I missed something completely in these other you know texts and you know I could have been full of myself so yeah I looked into these things and you know not to my surprise, you know, I, I, I was not surprised by what I found. Uh, it was it was all found lacking, um, and Christianity just just isn't. But that's based on research, not just because somebody told me, not just because I grew up in a Baptist church and you know, Mama said this, Mama said that. It was actually those things as a child that made me want to seek it out for myself even more as a grown man. So I just want to encourage you guys to do the same. Um, you know, time is winding down or winding up, actually. And, you know, we say tomorrow's not promised, but today's not promised. Uh, we're not even promised to, to, you know, survive the entire 24 hours. So before it's too late, jump in there and do some research. I believe you will be happily surprised by what you find. All right. So... Again, I don't want to take up too much of your time. I just wanted this to be uh, concise, and 
I wanted us to get to the point on our first uh, episode back in a while. So definitely stick around for part two. We're going to look at some different stuff. Um, I know I had made some, some promises about what we were going to look at in the last uh, review video, but at this point, it doesn't even matter. <laughs> so stick around if you can't i completely understand enjoy the rest of your day be blessed i love you guys you are a clean nation i am clean cow this is a closer look stand by